Hey everyone, John here from the Deer's Embroidery Legacy and in this installment of the Embroidery Medic we're going to answer that age-old embroidery question why what you see on screen isn't necessarily what you get when it sews out on your desired surface. Now before we do get started, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for notification of our videos. We really appreciate it and you'll want to stay tuned and see this mystery solved. <laughs> So here's the design in question and this was sent in from one of our members from our Facebook group and it looks great on screen. Everything is nice and even. All of the widths of the spacing between all of the outlines is perfect. And this is generally what you see when you pull a design up on screen. Now I did have them send me the EMB file so that it's a native working file within my software. That'll make it much easier to edit the design. And when this was sewn, and it was sewn onto a flat item, it did have a little bit of distortion. You can see distortion here and here, and that is because of push and pull compensation. Generally, the way or the direction a stitch is laid, you have tension on the top thread and the bobbin thread. They have a tendency to pull each other, so you'll get distortion within the direction of the thread as it pulls in. But then you'll also get push on the open ends of the objects, and you can see that on the top and bottom here, it looks looks a little bit wider on that blue outline, but on the uh, inside here, the direction of the stitch on the top and bottom, it's pulling in and that shape has distorted ever so slightly. Now that's going to happen on a flat item, but when you actually put it on a finished hat, because we're dealing with a curved surface, that's when things really get blown out of proportion. And that is one of the biggest learning curves for new embroiderers who buy a tubular machine that has the ability to, uh, to do finished caps, is they'll run something on a flat surface they generally get okay results compared to what they see on screen, but then they run it on that curved surface on a hat and it's a whole new world. So we're going to take a look at this file, see what little changes we can make, and the first thing I'll do is assess what was done and if it was done properly. So let's get started. Now the first thing I'm going to do is actually look at this design in the player first so I can see exactly how it's stitching without having to run it on the machine. I could look in the sequence view and look at the order of all the objects, but that doesn't doesn't necessarily give me a realistic sewing order, so to speak, how the design actually stitches each of the objects. Because with finished hats, there are some foundational rules that you need to follow. There's a bottom up inside out rule. The bottom up rule means that where the peak and the crown meet, you want to always move up to, uh, on the crown from the peak. So you're pushing away from the peak as it's moving forward. You also want to make sure that you're doing inside out. So the center seam of that hat, you're always moving your objects from the center out so that you are staying with the curve of the design and not going from one side all the way over and your design could buckle over. So those are the foundational rules. So let's see how they did. I'm going to go to my player and it's going to start sewing out the object here and I can see that it is actually doing from the bottom up inside out I like actually the 45 degree angle they have here and I'm going to pause it for a second normally I don't like using a 45 degree angle because that is what is causing the distortion that blue outline that's distorting so badly on the finished hats is because of what we see right here but I do kind of like the fact that it does have the underlay running at a completely horizontal stitch direction because that's going to flatten down the surface of the hat so that when it sews it has a nice surface that it's going to run. Sometimes I will put in extra underlay and I'll do some underlay stitches down the center seam and zigzag out on a big area like this so that I can actually make sure that I've sort of matted down the area of that fill before it starts to do the fill stitch. Uh, and normally I would turn it to a horizontal fill stitch direction, but in this circumstance, I'm going to let it slide because we're going to do something a little different that's going to fix all of these problems. And by keeping this at, I think it's a 45 degree angle, I'll check afterwards, but by keeping this fill at a 45 degree angle, it's not going to affect the, I guess, uh, horizontal stitches because if I did a horizontal fill with horizontal stitches then the areas of the H and that main stroke of the D will actually have some issues within it 
and you'll have a fill stitch and you'll have satin stitches all going the same direction and they'll have a tendency to sink into each other and disappear. So looking at this, it was actually done fairly well. It followed most of the guidelines and the principles, but I'll make a couple quick little changes and make sure that it's actually going to sew just the way I like it. Now one more thing, and I forgot to check this, it's doing this fill area, it's actually doing this stitch here. It does, again, from the inside out for the most part. I could change the order of that a little bit because I would probably do the uh, O and then the D and then the O and the H on the other side. So that's another little thing that I'm going to change within the design. So let's do this edit. It's not going to be a super long edit because for the most part, the person who digitized this followed most of the correct theory within the design. I'm just gonna do a few little tweaks and make it maybe a little bit better. Now the first thing I'm going to do is look at the stitch count. It is actually 8,690 stitches, so that is the stitch count of the design. I want to keep that in mind because I want to see how much it's going to increase or decrease the amount of stitches to get the quality that I'm looking for. Sometimes adding a little bit of stitch count if you're going to get better quality is, you know, it's, it's kind of just one of those things that you have to do. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take a look at that fill. I'm going to hit the T key so that I can get out of true view, hit the H key so that I can see the direction and it is at 46 degrees, sorry, uh, yeah, 46 degrees. So I was one degree off, but I'm going to change that to 45 just so I know that those horizontal stitches are, you know, and the underlay are staying horizontal to the direction of the fill and that is fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that object and I am going to duplicate it. So now I'm going to have a fill on top of the fill. Now it's going to also put it at the very end of the sequence. Now the reason why I did this is because I'm going to grab that fill and I'm going to actually uh, change it to an outline. So now it is an outline stitch around the outside, but I'm going to change that one to a satin stitch and I'm going to also make sure that I'm in millimeters, which is fine. I might actually increase that to three millimeters instead of the 2.5 that it's set at. So let's change that to a three, going to make it a little bit wider, and then I'm gonna put it to an offset. So it's offset to the inside, and then I'm going to make sure that it has a edge run. Now I just need an edge run stitch like that, and now the edge run is in place. Now that I have that edge run, if I look, it's on top of the objects, but I'm going to take this object now and I'm going to bring it underneath of number three, which is the fill. So I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to put it right up here and put it right in that order right there. Now I know that I'm going to have a perfectly shaped oval that's going to be a satin. I don't have to worry about that distortion in the design anymore, but I will need to go into this fill object and I'm going to hit the H key and I'm going to start to modify that object a little bit so that I can edit it. And let's just see here. Now this actually is going to be a little bit tough to edit. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to quickly re-digitize this shape. So let's do this instead. I'm going to delete that fill afterwards, but I'm going to take this. I'm going to go to my digitizing tool. So let's go to digitize. I'm going to hit on to digitize close shape. I'm going to do a fill stitch with a tatami and I'm going to make sure that it is the same color. But knowing that it's going to be at that 45 degree angle, I'm going to start right here and I'm going to digitize some pull compensation going this direction all the way around. And that way I know it's going to be good. And when I get over to here, I'm going to go straight and let's go straight and then let's go back around the other way and digitize a bit of pull compensation going the other way. So I've kind of adjusted this shape a little bit so I know that it's going to sew out based on the push and pull of the design. So there I can see I now have a push and pull. I'm going to hit this and I'm going to make this one 45 degrees because I want to make sure that it is that same angle. And now I can see that I have adjusted those hit the H key if I want to. I can just grab those two, pull them out ever so slightly so I know they're going to be okay. And I'll do the same thing here. I'll just grab these two, pull them out ever so slightly so they'll be okay. And now I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna get rid of that object. So let's delete that one. And I'm going to grab this object here and move it right up into this place right here. 
So that's what I have. And let's l turn off the true view. I can see now that I have all of my objects in order. I am going to che uh, check the sequence of the objects and make sure that my starts and stops align so that I avoid unnecessary trims. But before I do that, I do want to fix that little uh, you know, sewing order of the logo. I still want that H-O-O-D to be inside out. And I did notice that when I went to these lines right here, it does this object next, which is perfect. I want that object to be sewn right away, right uh, after this object is sewn. So I know the registration is going to be perfect. Then it's going to do this object, but then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab that D and I'm going to put the D right here in that order. So it's going to do that. So now if I look at the other starts and stops in this design, I'm going to hit the H key. I want it to start at the bottom, but I want it to end. Actually, I did not want to do that. Let's grab that. I got to wait, look for my little hand. I want it to end over here. So it's starting at the bottom here and moving up to the top. And then I want it to do a you know complete order. And then the next object, if I hit the H, I want to make sure that it starts right over here where it ended. So that way my start and my stop are perfect. If I wanted to right now, I could actually, you know, take a look at this, make sure everything's lined up. It looks like it's going to be perfect as far as the sewing order is concerned. My stitch count is up to 9,288, so I did add some stitches, but let's look at the redraw on this and see now how it's going to sew. So it's doing the same thing. I didn't modify that bottom lettering at all, and then it's doing the outline and it's doing this fill stitch It's kind of crossing over 45 degree angle which is good so it's going to not sink into the same stitch direction as the H and the D in the centers of the O's are. It's going to do that outline, it's going to do the satin stitch and then moving from the inside out it does that and we should be done. So this actually is how I would go about doing this design so it's going to look perfect on a curved surface and we will send this to the a uh, member of our group. I'm going to get them to run the sample because, you know, they have a machine and, and it's a learning experience. Hopefully they'll send me a picture back and we'll make sure that this design actually looks good and sews out well. Well, it's almost 24 hours to the minute since I sent the file off to the group member and she got back to me. She sent some pictures and this is what she said. OMG, it ran beautifully. Thank you very much. The satin stitch ties the whole thing up nicely. So, it worked well. You can see from the before and the after there's a dramatic difference and it just proves once again that the proof is always in the stitching. So hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time.